Today's episode of Desertwood Days with Kathy Blaze is sponsored by Dork Publishing, expanding minds through fantasy since 2018. Learn more at the Dork Publishing website, www.dorcpublishing.com. your host Kathy Blaze. Are you ready to elevate your mind personally and professionally? Well get ready for the founder of the Black Women's Collective, Miss Felicia R. Davis. Hello. Hey Kathy. Hey beautiful. So good to be here. Yes. It's been a while. Yes. Oh my goodness you look so beautiful. Oh thank you. (laughs) You too. Thank you. As usual. Oh. So the founder of the Black Women's Collective. Yes. I you know I know what you do in the community and you've been doing this for a while. And I like to add she, her, she found the Black Women's Collective, but this woman works with so many different people in our valley. So helpful, so supportive. She does a lot. Let me just put it out there like that. But I I always like to um, start to get a little information about the person themselves before we get started and all the good stuff. So I like to know, when did Felicia get started with all that you do in the community, all that you're known for? Mm. Well, first of all, I want to say thank you, Kathy, for inviting me to be a part of uh, this wonderful experience. I'm always honored when I get an invitation because I definitely do not take it for granted. And, you know, when did I start becoming the Felicia that you know today? Well, that started a very long time ago, but um, I really developed into really what you see today when I was really working at corporate. You know, my corporate background is I spent 25 plus years in HR. So I left my last corporate career 12 years ago as an HR executive. And, you know, the thing that really shaped my voice and how you show up from how you see me show up today Mm -hmm. is me seeing a very, a lot of very smart and talented women being passed over. Yeah. And it had absolutely nothing to do with that skill Mm -hmm. because, you know, you know, we're smart. We've got all the letters behind our names. We know how to do it. But it had everything to do with their inability to powerfully position themselves. Mm -hmm. And being a former HR executive, I had the distinct uh, privilege of being on both sides of the table and being in rooms where the big decisions are made. And so when I saw this become a consistent trend, I made it my commitment to really focus on helping women show up powerfully so that they can get chosen for the opportunities that they they really desire and deserve for that matter. That's awesome. And you may ask, what does this have to do with entertainment? It has everything to do with entertainment because, you know, as a female entertainers, we experience this every day that we feel that we get looked over on certain roles because we are a female. Sometimes it's because we think it's because of our size, our skin color. We experience this every day as entertainers. And that is why I wanted Felicia here to share this and to share her stories. Thank you for sharing that. Yeah, absolutely. And I know, I don't know if you mind talking about it. Mm -hmm. There was another reason that shifted you also. Yeah, so the other reason was that specifically, because you know I'm the founder of the Black Women's Collective, I found that black women were working twice as hard Mm -hmm. to get the same amount of recognition Mm -hmm. as some of their colleagues. And working twice as hard, they were being stressed out, overwhelmed, overworked, and underappreciated and underpaid, quite frankly. And that was my own experience. Mm -hmm. You know, I was, I made my way up the ranks. I made a lot of sacrifices that if I could go back, I would do it over in right. terms of, you know, time with my family, mm-hmm. missing out on things with my kids. 
And um, luckily, I have a husband who's very, very supportive. And so he was definitely handling things on that end. But what happened for me is that I actually ended up having two stress and two strokes. Mm. And the sad part is that I had the first one. And because I was so busy being busy, and also because it wasn't as, as severe, I didn't even realize that I had the first one. Right. And when I had the second one, it literally took me out. Mm. I had to learn how to walk, talk, write, do all the things over again. Mm. And in my moment of um, therapy, of rebuilding myself, finding my voice again, and also really uh, rebranding myself as a leader, uh-huh. because a lot of my identity was attached to my role. Right inside that organization right. and, and and as entertainers you know we do that we're we're, we're taking acting classes where we have a family at home we have an eight to five and we're going through all that stuff and a lot of times we're not listening to our bodies mm-hmm. so this is exactly what felicia has experienced right here yeah and so it was in that moment of, of therapy where i had a lot of quiet thinking time that I decided that not only was I not ever going to put myself in that type of situation again, but I was going to show other women how it is actually possible for you to uh, own the way you show up as a leader. It is possible for you to um, create the lifestyle that you want by design and not by default. Right. And so that's really at the heart of what I do is I help yes. women develop powerful communication skills, but doing it on their own terms. Right. And she's showing you how to show up as that strong leader. So showing up in the community, uh, showing up for work. I saw someone post something the other day speaking about how um, actors are being cast in roles and then they get the role and they call a day oh, I can't make it or I can't do that. So that is not showing up as the woman that this coach here would teach her women how to walk and show up in the community. Yeah. Yeah, it's about, you know, I saw an interview actually with Kobe Bryant uh, that happened several years ago. And he's telling this powerful story around how, you know, the way that he became the Kobe that we knew Mm -hmm. is that he made a commitment to himself and once he made that commitment to himself, it was unbreakable. Right. And so on the days when he didn't feel like getting up and going to that gym and working mm-hmm. out, when he tried to make an excuse, he reminded himself of the commitment that he made to himself. Right. And so I'm glad that you bring that up because sometimes it can be easy for us to sit in our comfort bubble, mm-hmm. you know, and say, mm, I don't feel like doing it yes. today. Yes. But we also have to ask ourselves, you know, what is the promise that we made to ourselves? Right. What is it? What is it that we really are stand for? Right. Because that thing that we are stand for is counting upon us to show up and do the thing right. that we committed to do. Because it's not about anyone else. Right. It's about you. So for someone to even get that their mindset even ready to accept that, what are a couple of uh, tools or steps which you recommend for them? Yeah, so that's a great question. I would say the first thing that you would you want to do is, number one, know that uh, working on your mindset is an ever-evolving thing. Right? It never stops. Uh-huh. So if you ever get to the point where you feel like, I've got this all figured out, right. that's already a problem. But the other thing, two really, really important tips is, one, to be comfortable with uh, making mistakes. Right. Mm. Be comfortable with being taking risks. And not only taking risks, but making mistakes inside those risks. Because that is where the learning occurs, Mm -hmm. and that is how you get to your next breakthrough, right? Right. What's most important in those mistakes is that you say, okay, this is what I'm taking forward with me. This is what I learned. This is where I need to course correct. And this is what I'm never going to do again, right? right? But oftentimes, we, like I said, we get stuck in our comfort bubble, Mm -hmm. or we we get paralyzed by fear. And we're already creating a story Mm. before anything has ever happened because of that fear. And you're creating a story or you may be stuck with a story that someone else has created for you already. That part. Yes. Yes. That part. Absolutely. So those are two things I would say, you know, be comfortable with with taking risks 
and be comfortable, get comfortable, get a new, develop a new relationship with failure. Mm. And, and also, I when love you, that. When develop you develop a, a new relationship, relationship with, with failure. failure. Yes. But here's the key about that is that you cannot attach your identity to it. Because when you attach your identity to a failure, you're going to get hooked to it. Mm. And that's going to keep you stuck. Right. You're, gonna, you're never going to be, you're going to be paralyzed and never want right. to try again. Oh my goodness. Those are some strong words right there. And that, you know, that's the thing is we have to get used to accepting those words and not always accepting it as a bad thing. Right. I mean, fail, you know, because failure, that just seems like such a dirty little word. Right. And we don't even want to hear that. Right. But I was speaking with one of my guests on another show and we were talking about um, doing self tapes and, and, I see you out there. You do a lot of self-tapes and, and um, videos and things out there. And, you know, we're looking for perfection. Oh, man. So we may want to do these 10, 15 times because we don't like something. My eye might be twitching or there's something going on. Mm-hmm. So we'll do that over and over and over, mm-hmm. not realizing we're the only one that's noticed that. Not only are we the only one, not only may we be the only one mm-hmm. that, that knows it, other people may notice it. But you know what the mm-hmm. thing about that is, is that... That is the thing that sets you apart from other people. Mm -hmm. And that's the thing that's actually going to attract your perfect people to you because they're going to feel like, yes, I can relate to Kathy. I don't have to feel like she's going to judge me because Mm -hmm. she's on this pedestal. And maybe I'm not where she is. I can go to her and talk to her about the things that are on my mind. I can ask her for support Mm. because she has a relatable uh, composure about herself where it's not built around having to be perfect. Right. You know? And we know no one's perfect. No one. If they are, I want to meet them. Exactly. Or maybe we don't want to meet them. I know, right? (laughs) (laughs) So you gave us some great nuggets today. And and like I said, all of those nuggets that you gave out can be used in any industry. Mm -hmm. And any industry is especially being an entertainer, those are the things that we sit and we think, oh, I have to be perfect, or I have to do this perfect. Yeah. So I have to live life perfect. I mean, there's that perfection. That's so much, that's yes, so much pressure. It is. And, you know, I'm glad that you, you reminded people that what we're talking about, because I, I often say this as well, too, is like, you know, Whenever I share something that has universal application, mm. it doesn't matter what industry you're in, doesn't matter mm-hmm. if you're an entrepreneur, whether you're a corporate person, right. like what we're talking about today has universal appeal. Right. And right. the most important thing that I want your audience to do is to listen for insight. You know, because when you get insight, that's the pebble that will allow you to then take your own creative heart mm. launch and do something with it. Yes. Listen. Yes. So speaking with Miss Felicia here today, you started the um, Black Women's Collective. I'd like to know, um, the day you were sitting there putting that blueprint together, where what was your mindset at that moment? Mm. I'm glad you asked me that because really the thing that really got me fired up about starting the Black Women's Collective was when my sister moved here many years ago mm. and she was participating in the black women's march mm. and she was actually a volunteer and every day she would come home and she would tell me what was going on and she would complain about things mm. and it made me say felicia you have to do something you have to do something that that completely centers black women in a way that's going to help them amplify their voice their vision and their visibility so that they can get chosen for the things that they desire Mm -hmm. and they deserve. Mm -hmm. And I have been a part of the Black Women Collective for quite a while, participating, being a team member, and I've learned so much, met so many people. You've, you've, people wouldn't even imagine the entertainers that you've had at your events. Mm -hmm. They just don't know. I mean, you have had some great entertainers at your show. One of them being Zane from yes. um, David's Man. David's Man? Is that the name of the show? The, yes. Yes, I love that show, too. I hope they keep going with that. Yeah. But she's a poet. Yes. She's an actress, but she has this voice. And she speaks what your mission is here. 
Yeah. These are the type of people that you're surrounding yourself with and you're bringing for the women to learn from and to hear yeah. and to experience. Yeah. So just give our audience a little bit of about the Black Women's Collective. I know you have it coming up again this year. Mm -hmm. So let's tell them what this is about. Yeah, so as a part of the Black Women's Collective, one of the things that we do, our signature experience every year, is um, the Black Women's Equal Pay Day experience. And that happens every year. Unfortunately, due to the, the, the pandemic pause, mm -hmm. you know, our pay equity has been pushed back further in the year. Last year, it was in August. This mm. year, it's moved all the way to September 21st. Yes. And so that yeah, means... it was that, earlier in the year. Like, wasn't it July the first year? No, no, yeah, it was July yeah. the first year. Then it moved to August. Now it's all the way to September. Okay. And so that means that as black women and women of color, we are still losing ground when it comes to pay equity. Mm. And so we do this event. This is our fourth annual Black Women's Equal Pay Experience. I'm so excited about it. And one of the things that really distinguishes us from other people who do this work is that there are a couple of things. We do not only focus on pay. We focus on the whole black woman. Right. And the reason why, Kathy, is because, you know, between myself and all the other uh, speakers mm -hmm. that we bring on, we can give you all the tools, all the tips, all the strategies. We can give you the playbook. Right. But if you have stuff going on in your home life, if you have stuff going on with your relationships, mm -hmm. if you have stuff going on um, in other parts of your world, you're not going to do anything with what we give you. Right. And so we're committed to focusing on the whole woman. And also, we commit to having just 50 women in the room with us. Right. And this year, because of the whole pandemic, we, we're doing a hybrid experience. Mm -hmm. And so we have 50 women in, in person, September 19th, and September 20th and 21st, and then 50 women who can participate online. That is awesome. That is awesome. And that is why the Black Women Collective has always, I've felt like it's been aligned with me because that is something that I've always felt in my business that I want to work on the whole woman. Yeah. I mean, I always said, you know what, I could put you in fancy clothes, but if you're not healed on the inside, that part. All that fanciness does nothing for you. It doesn't you. matter. It yeah. doesn't matter. And I'd like to also add this, because so I feel that is important, because we're talking about the Black Women Collective. This is an event that is focused on that, but there are so many people that support this. It's yes. not all Black women that's supporting this. Yes. That is what I want to make sure I put out there. I mean, you have major organizations. Yes. Can I even say one of them? Absolutely. Like SRP that supports this yes. event. And the thing that's important about SRP, thank you for bringing that up, they caught the vision from the start. So mm -hmm. SRP has been a sponsor and a supporter every year. Yes. And every year, because we're consistent, mm -hmm. because we can actually demonstrate our impact, we're getting more organizations come on, like AARP has come yes. on with us this yes. year. Yes. So it's important. This is a powerful lesson for us as leaders is that right. when you're doing things, you have to do it in excellence. You have to do it with consistency, yes. and you have to be able to talk about the impact that you're having right. with the work that you're doing. Right. And, you know, you have to realize that it's not just about you. Right. And that's the thing. And I and I always said this, like, I started this because of me. But then I realized that, you know what, that it, w it wasn't about me. Yeah, exactly. And that's what all that we do. And that's why I wanted you here to talk about this, because we have so much women in the industry that are struggling and they may be successful and a successful actor or uh, filmmaker or whatever but there's other areas that they need support in absolutely and this is so beneficial for them yeah absolutely that is awesome so um can you tell us um i know you have a couple of special guests coming this year can you talk a little bit about that yeah so to this year we're doing a two-day experience it's normally one day but again, we always improve and do more every year because we want to set ourselves apart from our colleagues and competitors. Yeah. So this year we have an evening of liberation okay. called Uncensor Yourself. And that's going to be an evening of spoken word, poetry. And then one of my good friends, actress and producer, 
Vanessa Williams. Mm-hmm. She's coming down. Yes, I forgot about Vanessa Williams. <laughs> I know y'all know who Vanessa Williams is. <laughs> yeah, she's coming down. She's doing her one woman show called Feet on the Ceiling. Okay. And so this is for people who may say, well, I'm not interested in the conference the next day. Right. But I definitely want to be there for that entertainment. Right. right. So you can come just for the entertainment or you yes. can come for the whole shebang. Yes. And then the next day is a full day of, of activations, oh. workshops. And the other thing I like to say is that we don't do things where we're talking heads in front of the room. Mm-hmm. We actually activate you. We put yes. you to work so that... So y'all come ready to work. Come ready to work. <laughs> and also the reason why is because we want you to start embodying what it feels like right. to do what we're teaching you so right. that when you leave, you can start activating it right away. Right, right. And there's some fun in there. There's always lots of fun lots there. Lots of fun. That is fun. So where can our audience find you? Yeah. So if you want to find out more about the event, go to blackwomenelevate.com. That is awesome. That is awesome. It was such a pleasure having you with us here today, Felicia. Yes, thank you so much. We do appreciate you. I know you do a lot in the community, and I really feel like um, women in our community as a whole would benefit for something like this. Yeah, come on out. Check out the website, and if it feels aligned, Mm. you should be in the room. Well, thank you. It was such a pleasure to have you here today. And thank you for joining us here today at Desert Wood Days. And we'll catch you next time. Mm-hmm.